It's time for the Taco Truck Roundup, the show where I summarize everything that's new at AppSumo. I've spent hours over the last week going through every single new LTD, clicking each button, choosing each menu item, and I can confidently tell you what is worth it and what you might want to save your pennies for. We're going to get started today with Fraud Blocker. Fraud Blocker is a tool that allows you to prevent click fraud on your Google or Meta ads. Essentially, it's going to monitor for fraudulent clicks, and then in real time, it will identify suspicious IP addresses, report those over to Google or Meta, and then prevent those ads from being shown to those repeated IP addresses. Fraud Blocker has a very simple interface that's focused on its core functionality. There's not a lot of settings that you need to worry about. It's kind of just the initial setup, and then you're pretty much good to go. You do get that real-time blocking of suspicious IPs, which is really, really good to have. If you're spending thousands or tens of thousands of dollars on ads every single month, I definitely would recommend some type of fraud prevention, and the price really can't be beat for a fraud blocker. While the settings are a little bit sparse, I really like the analytics and reporting section of Fraud Blocker. You can see exactly what it's doing so it's not overreacting to anything. And you can always dial things back or just put it in monitor mode if you need to. Now, unfortunately, during my testing of Fraud Blocker, the connection to MCC accounts, which are used for Google Ads when you're managing client accounts, well, that connection was broken. So I wasn't actually able to test Fraud Blocker with live traffic. But looking at the SumoLings reports over in the review section, there are people claiming that it saved them 50% of their ad budget, and there are a lot, it's a kind of an overwhelming amount of positive reviews, so I have a hard time believing that this beautiful interface just doesn't work at all, but I can't stake my reputation on it because I've not actually tried it myself. Now, Fraud Blocker themselves say that they don't work with Performance Max, Discovery, or Smart Shopping campaigns, so if those are your preferred methods of Google Ads, well, definitely sit that one out. Now, I did not give Fraud Blocker a final score because I didn't actually try it out with live traffic, but I do think it is a promising tool and something you should definitely take advantage of. At least try it out and then use the AppSumo 60-day return policy if you don't find it to be worthwhile. Next up is Jobboardly. This is a SaaS job board creation platform. It'll allow you to create and manage custom job boards with automated job importing from outside sources. So you can round up all of the jobs in a particular industry, put them in one central location, and then even charge for access to it if you'd like. In fact, you can charge on both ends. You can charge people to view jobs, but you can also charge employers when you post them. Overall, I found the interface very easy to use. The job aggregation tools are extremely powerful. And like I just mentioned, there are multiple ways to monetize this deal. Overall, I found the design templates to be very strong, but somewhat limited. If you don't like the look of this tool, don't plan on completely customizing it in the settings. They're pretty sparse, but very clear as to what they're going to do. There is some SEO features integrated, so you could possibly rank on Google. You can create a sitemap and send that over to Google Search Console and then you know, be able to track your keywords that you're ranking for and all of that good SEO juice. The only real downsides to Jobboardly is I had a few minor URL handling issues, such as they require you to type HTTPS before a URL when you're creating links on the site. I just found that personally annoying. I also had an issue where it would tell me a Facebook link was invalid simply because I typed HTTP versus TTPS, you know, just kind of those little annoying things. Now you also get a limit of how many jobs you can import. So if you're planning to use this tool to bring in jobs from the outside, Know that the platform itself is a lifetime deal, but you're only going to get 250 credits for importing jobs, regardless of what plan you buy on AppSumo. And if a job import fails, it will still cost a credit because it's using their CPU cycles. So I think that's fair, but something you need to know going in, you'll likely need to purchase more credits if the importing is something that's important to you. Overall, I gave Jobboardly a 7.8 out of 10. Next up is a very popular tool, Breezy Cloud. Now, Breezy Cloud is no stranger to AppSumo, but it is a quite mature and popular tool, so I was surprised to see it come back. If you're not familiar with Breezy Cloud, what it's gonna do for you is allow you to create a full website, multiple page websites with a CMS, beautiful templates, and even AI built in. One of the coolest features of Breezy Cloud is this new AI builder where you can simply link up to an existing Google My Business account and then just automatically create a website with correct hours and address and everything. It's quite remarkable. Of course, with Breezy Cloud, there are some limits. It's mostly focused on building a nice multi-page website that could be suitable for a service or local brick and mortar business, but it's not going to get into things like online courses or e-commerce. For that, you'd use other SaaS tools 
or bolt something on through an embed. If you're using something like a PayPal pay link, you could definitely put a button and link it up to a Stripe or PayPal button and sell a product on your Breezy website, but there's not a built-in e-commerce store or any functionality such as that. I would also say that Breezy Cloud is really targeted towards business owners that are tech savvy, but not developers. They might not know a lot of code. If you're an advanced developer, you might find Breezy Cloud to be a bit limiting because you don't get access to the database and the underlying theme and files, and you can't code things exactly as you want. You have to use their builder and it might not fit exactly with your preferences. Let's check out some of the comments on Breezy Cloud. We've got one here for Goo 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 Man. He says Breezy Cloud is gold, the best web development LTD he has ever bought. Tyler Yada says, I've been following them for a long time. Quite surprised to see them back. Thanks for the heads up. Justin Sturgis says, nice review. I love Breezy Cloud. It has been one of my most used and most valuable LTDs. It's not perfect, but the development is steady, consistent, and continually improves the product. Great experience with the team behind it too. Of course, the WordPress lovers were in the comments section as well. Here is System Promowania, who says only open source for me, and I like open source a lot as well. I use a ton of open source tools every single day, but you know what? Sometimes a SaaS tool is gonna get the job done a lot easier, and I think Breezy is one of those situations where if you can build out websites for clients, pay once, never have to worry about hosting or maintenance or updates or anything like that, boy, that is certainly compelling to a lot of people. And finally, we got 1BZDZITEX2X saying, no database, no duh. Just kidding, but obviously this is not a tool for developers. You're not gonna have access to the underlying code. And I think that's not something the average Breezy user even wants. Now, maybe in the future, I could see something like Shopify applying to Breezy where you could upload your own theme and actually have some access to the code. But right now I don't see a real compelling reason for them to go that route. Next up is Hyperreach AI. This is a website visitor identification and outreach tool. This basically identifies anonymous visitors on your website and then facilitates sales outreach. So if someone lands on your page, but they don't fill out a contact form, you'll still be able to message them. So the pros for this one are that I found it very effective for finding visitor information. And there were some good integration options if you wanted to get the data out into another platform. I think it could be valuable for lead generation. However, the cons on this one are numerous. There were many unclear features that just did not make a ton of sense. And the order in which you were supposed to jump between the menu items was very, very unclear to me. To top it off the email connection, you have to connect up an email account to actually do the outreach. I could not get that to work to save my life. And I know what I'm doing here. It's not like I made any mistakes. I could not connect up either Gmail or Google Workspace or a plain old SMTP account. I got errors at every turn. VC Focus says this looks like it has a ton of potential, but hopefully the emailing is fixed soon. Totally agree. Viva Las Vegas Nirvana says, what's the use case for having multiple scripts? He's talking about the tracking scripts you put on your website to identify the visitors. And then he says, each website has its own script. And that's right, I think in theory that you'd get a script for every single site that you connect up. However, right now, they don't seem to have developed it out to distinguish between which site has the particular script. And there's no way to make any sort of connections in the user interface. So in my mind, unless I'm mistaken, I feel like that's just an incomplete feature, but you can see that they've laid the groundwork to potentially have multiple websites managed under one account. And finally, we've got Tom Nelio who says, thanks Dave, nearly bought this one, but was hesitant as I purchased GoZen Form Builder from the same developer and the HTML to embed the form was broken. That's shocking. I am surprised to hear that the HTML embed did not work at all. So thanks for letting us know that Tom. And uh, yeah, I definitely feel like this is kind of an incomplete tool right now. Hopefully it matures in the future, but yeah, not the best. So I ended up giving this a final score of 4.6 out of 10. Moving on to a much more positive note, the final tool of the week is Zinc. This is a browser-based short form video creation studio. It allows you to create short form videos and then use AI assistance for automated editing. I found the post-production to be very, very impressive. It used some nice B-roll video footage, high quality graphics, and the captions were mostly right on point. The integrations are very strong. You can post your videos directly over to LinkedIn or YouTube if you get the right AppSumo plan, but there are plenty of options for downloading multiple formats to fit any social media network you might want to upload to. 
All right, so now let's flip the script and talk about some things I didn't like about Zinc. A lot of people mentioned this. There's no post-production editor. It's basically you get the video recorded and then it does all of the editing in the background and then you get your downloadable content. If you wanna change something, like in my case, it did one little title I wasn't real fond of, you know, it kind of be stuck with that. There's no way to do any refinement. So that is a big bummer, but you could also think of it as a feature and not a bug. You're not gonna have to think about post-production at all. Go talk to the camera, make the video, and then export it off to the social media platforms. Even if it's not perfect, done is better than nothing. I'd also say the other downside is that you can't just buy the base level plan. You gotta upgrade to at least tier two. That's gonna give you the YouTube integration and more importantly, the watermark removal so you don't have the zinc logo on your exported videos. That's kind of a bummer, but otherwise I felt like this was a very strong tool. Mark D says, surprised they don't have an eye correction AI fix. Great review, Dave, always really useful. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, that would be awesome to have an AI correction, especially if it looked good. I've seen ones that look okay and other ones that just make you look like you have plastic surgery. So it's kind of all about the execution there. Vast D Design says, did I miss it? Is there any editing of the created product? If not, is it on the roadmap? I already covered this and yeah, you didn't miss it. There is no editing. It's basically record and then you've got your downloads. And I did mention that I think there is an editor in the works, but I don't know for sure. Script Tutor says, hi Dave, this looks pretty cool. My concern would be, as you briefly mentioned, looking away from the camera while recording. And then he goes on to say, what would you recommend with using Zinc for maintaining eye contact since there is no AI eye correction built in? And what I would recommend is to get a monitor placed somewhere near your camera so that when you're looking at the camera, it you can actually see the monitor. What I'm doing right now is I have a little screen with a teleprompter so I can look directly into the monitor and still see some of my notes. Other times when I'm making my normal reviews, I actually have just a video feed of myself so I can tell if maybe, you know, my hair looks funny. I mean, I guess my hair always looks funny, but maybe, you know, just something is going on with my overall appearance and you'd hate to record an entire video only to find like one side of your collar has popped up or something silly like that, right? So have, they call that a confidence monitor. Having some kind of a teleprompter that you can look into the camera and then get some feedback, whether it's notes or visual feedback on what you're doing is very, very valuable. And it works great for Zoom calls too. So if I'm gonna do uh, a Zoom call, I can look directly into the camera like this and see the user on the other side. It just definitely gives an air of professionalism and that you really know what you're doing. D Patience says, hi Dave, I know these are different uses, but how does this compare to stuff like video to blog? If you had to, which would you choose if you were a solopreneur and didn't want to buy so many LTVs unless they were really, really worth it? Would you still get both? And so my response to that is video to blog or video to page, either one of those tools, they're pretty interchangeable. I feel like those are doing one thing and then Zinc is doing kind of the opposite, right? So Zinc is meant to create short form content. It gives you a prompt or an idea, maybe some a, a short script or some brief talking points that you can use. And then you record the video and now you've got video content you can upload. Now that still requires a lot of you. You need to be on camera. You need to have decent pronunciation and feel confident with your voice and your message. You kind of got to know a decent amount, I feel like, to talk on camera and sound somewhat together. It's, it's not easy. It takes a lot of practice. On the flip side, if you're doing something like video to blog, well, the video already exists and now you're just repurposing it into another medium. And it's a medium that is a lot easier to edit and to make yourself look better. I mean, just think about it. Why do you think text messaging got so popular? Because people can take some time and think about exactly what they want to say and send a very brief message and they're not interrupting anyone on the other end. So I think, you know, written communication is still very important we're consuming so much short form content, it's really hard to pick just one. I would say, you know, kind of the old Gary Vee thing, whatever you're comfortable with, do that and then do it a lot. So if you like making short form content, do it all the time. If you like to make written form content, do that as well. Overall, I like Zinc quite a bit. I gave it an 8.2 out of 10. 
All right, before we go, make sure you check out the full length versions of any of the tools that were mentioned in this week's roundup. They are linked down below, as well as my app Simo link. Click on that before making a purchase so that I can continue to make these LTD reviews. If you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments, head over to clientamp.com and get signed up for the free email newsletter. And that's gonna do it for this week. I will see you in the next review.